Hello, my name is John Nelson with the Missouri Department of Transportation. I'm the State Highway Safety and Traffic Engineer. And today I want to share a little bit about our SAFER tool, a safety assessment for every roadway. You know, like most of the country, Missouri has been battling the ongoing uh, challenge of traffic fatalities and serious injuries on our roadway. And you can see here that over the last 10 years or so, uh, we've averaged 937 traffic fatalities every single year. And really the last decade has had a, a slow but steady increase in traffic fatalities um, that have really presented a lot of challenges in, in how do we go about addressing this? How do we get back to some of the reductions uh, that we saw from the mid 2000s into the early teens? Um, you know, there's a lot of risky behaviors that we see on the roadways in Missouri, uh, just like we see throughout the country, whether that's speeding or traveling too fast. Distraction certainly is, is an area that's increasing and certainly underreported in the numbers that we have. Impairment continues to plague our roadways. And then just simple decisions like choosing not to wear a safety belt or a motorcycle helmet. So when we talk about how do we address that in Missouri, you know, we've gone through different progressions and evolutions uh, really over the last several decades. When you think about sort of the, I guess, the origins of traffic safety, you know, there was this time where everything was about nominal safety. And what I mean by that is it was very black and white, right? So you either met the standards or you didn't. And if you did, if you met the standards of, say, the Green Book or the Astro Roadside Design Guide, then it was considered safe. Uh, if not, it was considered unsafe. Uh, but as we've learned, you know, we really have come to understand that there's so much more beyond that, that that it gets into this. And so in the mid 2000s, um, you know, with the sort of the advent of better access to crash data, you know, we could begin doing things like hotspot analysis, finding where those crashes cluster. Uh, but we also began to realize that uh, for most of the crashes, they're not occurring in clusters. They're occurring all over the system throughout the state um, in a variety of ways. And, and so that really led to kind of the precursor, if you will, to the safe system approach of this comprehensive safety, taking the four E's, engineering, education, enforcement, emergency services, and really trying to look at cross-discipline um, countermeasures to really resolve the issues that's going on. Uh, that sort of dovetailed into systemic safety, which really instead of just looking at those clusters, said, okay, what parts of the system are we seeing these common characteristics, whether that's roadway characteristics or uh, driving characteristics, where are those things occurring most and how can we blanket those systems with countermeasures to try to decrease the crashes that are taking place? Uh, and then in 2009, 2010, uh, somewhere around there, Astro released the Highway Safety Manual that really allowed states for uh, really the first time to begin to quantify the impacts of the treatments that we were considering on projects and, and to begin to evaluate a benefit cost analysis. So the safe system approach is now sort of, you know, the, the buzzword in the industry. Uh, but I really just think of it as that continuing evolution of a more sophisticated approach um, a more comprehensive approach to addressing the problem that's occurring on our roadways. And so there's six principles and five objectives to that safe system approach. And this is really where we've tried to take as an agency, how do we take this philosophy of safe system approach and how do we integrate that into our day-to-day -day processes? And so we look at those six principles on the outside edge of the safe system approach. We look at those five objectives we're trying to achieve. Uh, and really in a lot of ways from a project development standpoint, from a STIP standpoint as a DOT, um, there's a lot that we can impact, particularly in that safer roads category. And so that's what we're trying to do uh, with the safer document. Uh, one of those principles of the safe system approach is about redundancy. Um, and that's really just trying to layer these systems, these defenses, uh, to make sure that we're really minimizing or, or hopefully eliminating the potential for death or serious injury. So, you know, if education fails, we've got enforcement there to back it up. If that fails, hopefully there's engineering on the roadway. If that fails, uh, then you begin to look at those emergency services. But really building that redundancy is key and, and making sure that we're including safety in every project is certainly uh, a large component in that. I just want to briefly share sort of 
uh, my own safe system story that I think about. So when I was a kid, I grew up about two hours south of St. Louis, and it was a real treat for uh, me and my brothers to get to go to a ball game with my dad to see the St. Louis Cardinals play um, at Bush Stadium. I'm talking about the old Bush Stadium, you know, with the arches around the top, the AstroTurf field. Um, but when we would go, we always had this rule that, hey, we watched every single pitch. And there were a couple of reasons for that. One was just we were really into baseball. We wanted to track every little moment of the game. Uh, but the other purpose was really for safety, right? Um, you know, if you were fortunate enough to sit down the, the third baseline or the first baseline, you really had to pay attention because you never knew when a high-speed line drive foul ball was going to come in your direction. And unfortunately, if you weren't paying attention, you could get seriously injured. Uh, and back in those days, there really was no protection against that. The only netting that kind of existed was right behind home plate. Well, fast forward to just a few years ago, um, the Cardinals at the new Bush Stadium, and like many other major league teams, they have now extended this netting down the south, the sidelines, down the foul base, uh, the, the foul lines. Um, and so that netting now really comes all the way out into the outfield. Uh, and you might ask yourself why, uh, but the answer is really was to address this safety issue that continued to plague fans and, and baseball teams uh, for years, right? And so now they've extended this netting uh, really to try to add that additional protection. But I want you to think about what they did not do. You know, they did not take the netting all the way around the stadium. Uh, they did not ask people to quit coming to the stadium or to quit sitting in areas with no netting. Uh, they certainly didn't quit playing the games. All of those would have been alternatives that could have been considered to eliminate the problem of people being struck by a baseball. Um, but they knew that wasn't really a feasible option, right? Uh, so instead, what they did was they took a strategic, measured approach to address the problem by focusing on the locations and the characteristics that involved the highest risk, right? So they didn't put netting in the outfield where a fan could just as likely be struck by a home run. Um, and the reason they didn't is because a home run is not going to be traveling at the same velocity, the same speed, or even at the same trajectory as those line drives down the first and third base lines. So when we talk about safe system approach in Missouri, I like to think of it like that. It's a strategic measured approach. What can we do in every project to make a difference? And so our safer tool, again, safety assessment for every roadway aims to do just that. We're looking at every single project to see, okay, where can we add safety? Where can we add to the system? Where can we build in redundancy to this project, even if it's not a safety project? Right. So it may be a maintenance overlay. It may be a bridge replacement. Um, it may really have nothing to do with safety specifically, but there's still an opportunity to do something. Uh, there were several reasons we went down this path. Um, probably the biggest was just to kind of change the culture in Missouri. You know, uh, we had been in a mindset of really taking care of the system asset management uh, for several years. That was all that we could afford to do. You know, we could barely keep up with that. And so it really uh, kind of created this mindset of, uh, very streamlined processes. We're only going to do the bare minimum to make sure that the the pavement condition or the bridge condition is maintained. Um, as we've gotten more funding, that's now created opportunity to think more, but breaking out of that cultural mindset um, does not happen overnight. We've also seen significant changes in the workforce, you know, whether that uh, is retirements or just turnover, people transitioning to other locations in the industry. Um, and we lose a lot of that institutional knowledge about what it looks like to create a safe roadway. So sometimes, um, you know, newer staff may not even know the right questions to ask. Uh, and then certainly accountability. Uh, you know, we spend millions of dollars every year on safety improvements. We want to make sure we're getting the greatest return for our investment. So what we've done with the safer tool is we've really just uh, taken some of the proven safety countermeasures that Federal Highway has identified, also the ones that we know about in our state, and we've just created a document that simply walks our project teams uh, through those different areas. And so we've got eight categories uh, that every project team walks through, um, and within each category, there's just a series of questions. Um, you know, it's not a, a checkbox that they have to complete. It's just to really facilitate and uh, inspire conversation, discussion among the team, and look for every opportunity that might exist to implement a measurable safety improvement on that project. So, you know, vulnerable road users is a good example. Are there vulnerable road users in the vicinity of this project? Uh, to what extent? Where are they crossing? How are they crossing? Uh, what can we do to minimize uh, their conflict with a vehicle? What can we do to separate them? 
Um, roadside, same thing, right? Um, you know, are there fixed objects in this project that while we're there, we can remove or we can shield? Um, you know, are there edge drop offs that we can uh, repair to minimize our maintenance and to create a safer system while we're there? Are there TISMO strategies? Are there ITS strategies? Things with technology that we can do to implement um, safer system, safer roads. And so we just walk through these questions uh, really as early on in the process as possible. The idea is to do this during the scoping phase, uh, the estimating phase, so that it can be uh, rightly programmed and, and estimated and included and not be seen as sort of an add-on too late in the project. Uh, and this is really you know, generated a lot of great conversation, but more than that, um, it's it's resulted in real improvements and real results. Um, we've also provided the project teams with sort of supplementary tools and resources that complement the SAFER document, uh, things like little estimators and Excel spreadsheets that uh, they can look at, hey, if we add, you know, chevrons to 10 curves in this project, what type of impact might we expect? What if we added 10 miles of guard cable to this interstate uh, rehabilitation? What impact might, what might we expect? Uh, we've got crash prediction tools, crash stat maps, um, a lot of different resources they can begin to facilitate that conversation and then make real decisions about what they want to do. Uh, and the results have been really good. So we're just starting kind of year three of the Safer Tool in Missouri. Uh, and I just want to show you briefly the results uh, from one step cycle to the next. So uh, a couple of years ago in the 2023 through 2027 step, 28% of our projects in that step included some measurable safety improvements. 16% uh, of the new capital projects added to the step that year included safety improvements. Total investment was about $489 million, and we were seeing a benefit cost of about four to one. We'll fast forward to uh, the current step, the 2024 step, uh, and now we can see that as a result of safer, 50% of the total projects in the step now include measurable safety. Uh, perhaps more impressive, two thirds of the new capital projects uh, added to the step include safety compared to just 16% a year prior. And then we've seen a 33% increase in the total amount of funding dedicated or programmed for safety improvements. And, and best of all, we haven't seen any really diminishing in the benefit cost. In fact, we saw a slight increase from one year to the next. So it's been a really incredible journey for us. Uh, I do want to mention, we, you know, SAFER is not just about infrastructure for us. We do have a companion uh, behavioral educational tool called SAFER Access for Everyone on the Roadways. And that really outlines the public policy measures we need to implement in Missouri to come along and complement the infrastructure improvements. Again, to build that redundancy between public policy and education and enforcement to engineering and emergency services. Um, and again, combining those together really gets us to that safe system approach. So for more information about SAFER, you can uh, use the QR code there. You can also visit Missouri's Engineering Policy Guide at epg.modot.org, or I would be more than happy to talk to anyone about it as well. Thanks again for the opportunity to talk about SAFER, uh, and we wish you the best in your journey to eliminate fatalities and serious injuries on your roadways. Thank you.